Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. It's Saturday, so it's an update video, but there's a lot in this. So I highly encourage you to watch this thing all the way through. This is good. Um, so this week went a lot better than last week. A lot of really cool stuff's happened, so I'm going to share some of it with you. This being the first one, you're like, what is this? Oh, yes. This is a set of AFR, and these are the 385 CNC heads. Now... This is neat because they sent me this set to test on the 540. So I've already flowed them, and I'm going to do a whole video. You can get to see the flow numbers and everything on it. But this is going to go on the 540. This could be a really, really, really nice deal because, as you know, the or for those that are new to my channel, I have a 540 Dyna Mule, and right now it's got a set of Pro Max 317 heads on there. They've just been milled down to 110 cc's, and it's made pretty good power, 875. But... These heads should really pop it up, I hope, because here's the thing. Uh, these are 119 cc chambers, and the other heads are 110 cc, so I'm going to lose about a point of compression, which to be quite honest with you, I really wanted the higher compression, except for fuel cost is outrageous, which I'll talk about later in this video as well. So this will get me back to the pump gas range. So, But these, are, I've already flown them. They're about 50 CFM more of airflow than the Pro Max heads. So yeah, it lost a point of compression, but I'm hoping that air, additional airflow really makes up for it. I've definitely got the cam to take advantage of these heads, and this is going to be cool. So I really look forward to it. And I do have to make a couple of changes. Let me stand the head up without dropping it. I had them send me a uh, set of springs that are good to an 850 lift. Let me just make it a little bit more secure. And they sent me um, this setup, which is a triple spring, and which is fine. I, well, actually, I don't really, I never sell heads with triple springs on them. I, I don't because there are so many better dual springs, smaller diameter springs that have the same spring pressure and then they have less mass, so it's less weight to control. But I don't blame that on the AFR. That's their package. What I totally forgot about is I'm using stud mount rockers and I'm using the comp um, ultra magnums but they won't clear this spring. So they barely clear a 1625. So I've got to switch these springs out and you might say, well, what spring are you going to use? The spring I'm going to switch them to is of a PSI 426 RML. That's the same one I actually use on the Camaro and many other stuff. Those are good to like 900 lift, 950, depending on how you set them up. But that's what I'm going to run. It's also a 150 diameter. And that's what I'm going to run because I'm also going to buy a, because right now it's all 17 rockers. I'm going to buy a new intake rocker that's 1.8, so I can actually switch and put a 1.8 on there with this because these really do move a lot of air. I get to test that too. I don't know when this is going to come up, I'm being quite honest with you, because I want to test the oil pump stuff. I want to change to the gear rotor, see what that does, then to the better oil pan, see what that does, then maybe these heads. Don't. I'm, this is an idea that popped in my head, but I don't know that I'll entirely do it. Right now, Dunsworth has my 477 big block Chevy that he's building, and it's actually, most of it's together, the heads are on and whatnot. Waiting for the rockers. Uh, certain companies said to send me a set of rockers and then been dragging their feet. I know they got busy and stuff, but that, if they don't, that's fine. I just need to order another set of rockers. It's just delaying things. But since that engine's not together, I thought about taking the blower, because that's got a 1071 roots charger, and putting it on the 540 with these heads and see what it'll do. It'd be 11 two to one, but of course I run on methanol at that point, because that'd be kind of cool. That'd be kind of cool. I'm not going to lie. Really, really neat. But anyway, that's pretty cool. That's a nice thing coming up. And then, this is super exciting. Check this out. Well, my wife and I decided we we're going to go out to eat at Simple Simon's Buffet in Coweta. I love Simple Simon's Buffet. And you'll never guess what I saw there. If you don't know who this guy is, this guy is Mike Edwards. And you might say, well, who is that? This is who he is. So far this weekend, let's see what he does here. Knows that he cannot afford to let Mike get out of the gate first. Ready, set, go. Out of the gate, 300s, that might be enough. Let's find out. Anderson out of the gate first. Mike Edwards trying to run him down. Top man winner. Oh, Mike Edwards, he runs low ET at 6.5. This guy won the NHRA Pro Stock Championship. And when he did it, and I remember because it was a great show to watch he just didn't win it he was dominant and we're talking like had greg anderson jason line these guys were on top and then all of a sudden he comes out and man he is setting low et's number one qualifier he is on 
fire. Amazing. And the best part about it, he literally is right down the road. So I had only seen him when I went uh, to Topeka to watch a competition years and years ago. And get to see him again, it was like, oh, celebrity. My wife was with me and she's like, I can't believe you're all geeking out over that. I said, let me put it to you this way. If I saw Jennifer Lawrence, beautiful actress, right? And I'm sure she's very intelligent. I would be more okay talking to her because I see her as more of, more of a normal person. Mike Edwards, to me, is not just a pro stock champion, which is a huge accomplishment. The man's got to be a genius at the engine driving all that stuff together. So when I'm talking to him, even though he's not at all at trying to make me feel this way, and I promise you that, I feel like I'm a four-year-old trying to tell a story. Like, hey, I, I build an engine. I do cylinder heads. That's what I feel like I am to him because he's the top of the top. So great, and he's a super cool guy, super great. But man, it was the great honor to, to get to talk to him again. Here's the other fantastic news. The shirts have came in for my son's car. Um, for those that don't know, this is a project car for him and we're working on it somewhat together, but this is very, very neat. And I'll talk about more about that at the end of the video because I had been doing swimming updates for him, but he's taken some time off. Well, not really taking time off. He's in the off season, so no more swimming updates. So we're gonna do car updates on the Snow Beach where you can get see how much progress we've made. That's at the end of the video. But I had shirts made and anytime you buy the shirt, and I'm gonna put a link in the description so you could buy the shirts, any of the money that goes will go for this project. So you'll get, get to see it make progress. This is actually the car and they did a good job. You might say, well, it doesn't have an engine in it. How'd you put an engine in it? The guys did amazing that did the shirts. Um, this is the Dino Mule engine, the small block Chevy. If you look in the background, you can see a picture of the big block just hanging out. But anyway, they shoved it in there and got it to look right. So I, I'm pretty happy. This isn't even the, I love this part. And by the way, you're like, why is it seriously wrong? I thought it was called student driver. Well, it turns out someone else had that name. So uh, Bishop came up with the name seriously wrong because the car is seriously wrong. On the back side, there you go. And that is a good one. That's my logo. And I have to say, it's better than my other shirts. This shirt's not cheap, I'm gonna lie, it, it, not gonna lie. This thing cost quite a bit to print because of that image on the front. But, really cool shirt. Here's the other thing, you do get, I'm gonna do a giveaway, because someone helped with this. Patient with this one. Uh, by the way, these are sizes, like I've got three X as far up as I go. But anyway, yeah, uh, links in the description by the shirts. If you buy a shirt, you may enter it in a chance to win the intake manifold. Now you're like, <laughs> What kind of giveaway is this? You're giving it a Speedmaster way? Someone donated this. This is not how you'll get it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to heavily modify it. I mean heavily. I'm going to try to do as many tricks as I can with this thing, and I'm going to test it on the 540 Dino Mule because I think it'd be cool. So that's the plan for that. So buy a shirt, and uh, maybe you'll get a chance to win that. Um, I don't know when it's going to be over. It's probably whenever I get done porting that. That's what I'm going to say. That's the end of the competition because now the intake's ready to go or at the end of the people to buy the shirt. So anyway, that's pretty cool. Um, I, I think it's neat. So please buy the shirt. Also on the website, um, and I'm also going to put a link in the description. I have been showing the dyno results from the small block Chevy that went to the dyno, the dyno mule for that. Um, that is also on the online store. I'm going to put a link in the description. So in case you wanted to buy that book that had, well, I tested E85, the Tunnel Rams, which by the way, that's the next technical video on Monday. The Tunnel Rams, all that stuff's there for you to buy. And it's a pre-order. And I highly recommend you do that because what I'm going to do is I'm going to order 10. If I get zero orders, which I've got not a single one yet, not even on the big lock one, not a single order. Once I get um, in April, I'm going to order 10. And once they're sold out, they're gone. They'll only be available in PDF. So if you really want to see a book in front of you, pre-order it. I highly recommend that because I'm only going to order 10 more than the pre-order. And then once they're gone, they're gone. I'm not going to reprint. Because I've already got still like 20 other books that probably will never sell. So it's just a cost thing. Anyway, here's the next thing. This is the next thing. So I know you're thinking, why don't you, haven't you taken the truck out? Tracks have been open and our track here has been open for at least three weeks. It's kind of cool today, which would be absolutely perfect weather since the S10 has, you know, the uh, Torque Storm Supercharger on it. However, um, things just haven't gone 
time-wise great. Not that I'm, I have to say I'm being lazy about getting it out because there's so much here in the shop that really needs done. It's hard for me to invest. Really, you get to think about a whole day you're without production because you're gonna have to load the truck, um, go to the track, unload the truck. The whole thing is you're gonna lose a day, um, at least. I just, at this point, there's so much people and people bugging me, where's my stuff, where's my stuff? By the way, the squeaky wheel does not make you go faster because every time I've ever had a customer that's bugged me to get their stuff, where's my stuff, where's my stuff? And I mean every single time. I'll finish it quick and they'll wait months to pay. They'll rush me to get it done and then they will not rush to pay every single time. So squeaky wheel will not get the grease here. I'll, you're still in the same order, but I'm working as much as I possibly can, uh, like seven days a week for I don't know how long it's been. Last day I really had off was, uh, well I had a last week or a couple weeks off for a swimming. But other than that, because without swimming, Christmas. So don't do that. Anyway, I haven't had time to mess with the truck. Really, it doesn't take much to get ready. But this is what I want to talk about. I totally feel bad for you guys too. This is the fuel that the uh, Camaro runs on. This is Sunoco 118 SR 118. Really, the Camaro could run on 116 and have before. But an odd story, they were out of 116, so I bought 118 and it went faster. I actually do put about two gallons in the 20 gallon cell. So it's probably got 15 that was in it total. Two of the gallons are 118. You might say, why? I truly don't need it. And I'm being honest. But because I haven't raced enough to, to make sure that the tune's 100%, which I think it is because I look, it's fuel injected. The correction's like less than 2%. That's at the top, which is really, really close. So I'm not too worried. It's more like an added security. But holy sh wow. That fuel right there, this is a five gallon pail, $155. Just to give you an idea, when I take the Camaro out, this is strictly what it runs on. It doesn't have a mix of anything else. I'll bring, I usually have 15 gallons and I'll go through about 10 to 12. You think about that, that's $450 in just fuel for the car. Not even the truck to pull the car to the track. This is unreal. <laughs> Uh, I really would like to switch the Camaro to methanol because it's so much cheaper. You're like, well, you lose twice, you use twice as much. Last time I bought methanol it was cheaper than pump gas, but let's say it's five dollars a gallon. That that would make it double. Okay, ten. I'm spending ten dollars a gallon instead of thirty one. Unreal. So yeah, I'd be happy to switch it over to methanol. I wish I had two methanol carburetors on it for it right now. I'd do it. Which does bring up another point. If any of the viewers have any tunnel rams that would bolt on this, you can't have one that has a center head bolt or bolt right here. And you might want me to test a tunnel ram with these heads. I'll be happy to do it. So you got that profiler, that'd be a perfect one. Or even that new Elderbrock, like I run the 7085, I'd be happy to test it. Cause I've got the carburetors, I'll just take them off the Camaro and test on it. But I really wish I had methanol carburetors really bad um, because I'd rather switch. But this, my gosh. So it's hard to, I w and the sad part is I know the trucks probably doesn't even need it because I mean I've raced around town anyway kind of just driving around it's more for safety but geez Louise anyway so they have a test and tune today I don't think I'm going to make it obviously uh, anyway there's that I thought I'd say if you're wondering why so many people are doing pump gas deals this and before you say well that's why everybody runs the 85 wait until you see the video where I put the small block Chevy dyno mule on E85. It made less than the pump gas. Okay, so it's not uniform. So like the 355 that I tested, it made more by 10. The 406 that's in the S10, it made more by, I think 20. But it ain't uniform. And that's the other thing. Both those were tested with race E85, which is $8 a gallon, not pump E85. So pump E85 being up and down, it's, it's not the same. Like people will tell you that too. Anyway, so feel free with the fuel. Now, since we don't have any swim stuff, time for a talk about the old Nova project here. Seriously wrong. Let's get to it. First off, there's the engine that's going on. You're like, wait a minute, that looks a lot like uh, that engine you built for your sister's Pontiac Firebird. You're correct. This is that same engine. My sister, she's like, she'd gotten halfway into this project. And she says, you know what? I'll be honest with you. I don't drive this car enough. By the way, that's her first car. It's a 1988 Firebird. 
why don't you see if Bishop wants it? And Bishop said, uh, I would rather have, because I gave him the choice. You can have the Firebird, and we'll put the engine in that. And it's a, it's cherry, by the way. It's a really nice car. Or the Nova. He picked the Nova. Anyway, what she said she might do was either one, she'll sell it and use the proceeds for the Nova, or she's like, if you think you'd get more money doing a, like buy a t-shirt and get a chance to win her car, she'd do that. Which I haven't tried that yet. I'm still debating. We'll see how well this goes with an intake one. But I don't want to be like, I only sold 100 shirts, so I maybe made 1000 bucks, and your car sold for 1000 I don't want to do that to her. So she might just sell them on Facebook Marketplace. Point being, though, she has no renewed for the engine, so this will be the first engine that goes in here. You can watch the video about this being dynoed. It made 425 horsepower and 425 foot-pounds of torque. Nice street engine. I think it's like 9.8 inch compression. Perfect for its first engine. Currently, what's being worked on with this is it has to run a motor plate because that's what goes in here. You can see these spacers is because it was a design for the big block, and it has to have this, these spacers so the small block will fit in it. The only downside is I want to run a mechanical pump because I don't want to have to worry about him forgetting to turn on the electric water pump. And yes, I can set it up with the, because it will have fuel injection, the sniper one. Yes, I could have it where it turns on that way, but I just don't want something failing with him because he doesn't have enough experience working on cars to understand what might have gone wrong. So mechanical pump. What I'm going to have to do because of that spacer plate is cut off a section of the pump that's equal to the section of the motor plate, and then all the pulleys will align, which would be great. And then back to business. Once that's together, uh, we could put on the flywheel. I know it looks all cluttered just because I'm trying not to lose stuff. But then I'll put on the flywheel. I actually have a real cheap converter to put in. Keith donated this, which is the guy that worked for me. He donated this Turbo 350 because he got it, came out of something. But it's all grungy and stuff. I got a shift kit. I nearly need to clean that thing up. And that's what will go in it. I did just order yesterday, God, I love my son, a quick performance four nine inch to go back here. I already have the, which I haven't put it in yet, the Caltrax Spit Mono Leafs. I haven't ordered the Caltrax yet because it costs, I just don't have a lot of money and I'm spitting too much on these dyno mills. I got the Caltrax shocks for the rear too. Currently what's been worked on with this, and this has been somewhat cheaper thing to do is the floorboards. They were all cut out, so ordered factory replacements. I did a crappy job of kind of putting them in. Forgot to plug that hole, still need to do that. Going around these bars at the back was a pain, and they're still not all the way there. Bishop, you can see some light shining through. Bishop's going to get out here and start siliconing the living crap out of all these seams. I need to plug those holes in the back. If anybody has the rear seat for a 1976 Nova, I would love to have it um, because... I want to put it in there just to, I'll cover that up anyway for safety. I've got a really weird story sometime I might tell you about not plugging those and how dangerous that is. I know a person that died from that. Um, but anyway, I'm going to put metal over those, put the seats on. That will be in. I still have to order his seats. He actually wants like the same ones that the S10 has. So then I can mount those. I am going to put hush mat, which I did that on the S10 too. That's why it weighs so much. You're like, no, it doesn't. If you get some of this hush, man, I'm telling you, this got some weight to it. I'm going to put that through the whole thing just so it's quiet. You're like, well, I'm going to make it slower. His Pat, he loves swimming. He likes fast cars. Make it, hopefully you understand that. So if he goes kind of fast, and he might race it maybe once a year if that. I would like to say, hey, be in it all the time. I think he can bracket race with this one. and be perfect for that, but... Anyway, the point is, that's where it's at. This weekend, the plan is really just to get that sealed up. Get the... I got to figure out some way to mount this on my mill so I can mill that off. Get the front all hooked up. Clean up the transmission. Put the two together and put it in. Because once that's in, then I can start mounting where the radiator goes and other things. But this is his project. And that's why I really encourage you to buy the shirts. My goal, and this is a huge goal, is to have it drivable by the summer or sometime in the summer um a lot of the major pieces are kind of taken care of obviously we've got an engine we've got a transmission torque rotor rear end now um it still needs i have no electrical at all that i wish i really had that's going to end up being one of those things where it doesn't look like it's that much but it ends up adding up 
I can tell you that. Still have to kind of finish the brake lines. They're not even close to being done either. They're just there so the engine can go in. Um, but anyway, when it's all said and done, it'll be all right. I don't have any of the front pieces. I wish I had a donor car. I truly do. So I need the front bumper. I need all the crap for the back. It's going to look like it will not be painted by the end of the summer. That's for sure. But at least it'll be drivable. And then maybe I could save money to have it painted or we'll do it ourselves and be an okay job. But anyway, that's his project. And it's called Seriously Wrong because the car is seriously wrong. So anyway, buy some shirts. Hope you got something out of this video. Yeah, I feel bad for you guys buying race fuel all the time. I truly do on that one. Um, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Remember, I'm no Superman, and you guys take care.